Let's get into the, the talk of Ghana's AFCON. And I think that a good place to start would be the managers of the national team, the, the people who deal with the day-to-day -day operations of the national team. Um, first of all, um, Ghana camped in Qatar. Uh, we heard that the camping was great and that facilities were good. The team went through the motions just as they had to and eventually ended up arriving late. Um, I've heard versions of why we arrived late. Milo himself says that it was deliberate. But first of all, what, what I want to touch on has to do with the sleeping place of the national team because um, where you sleep is very essential to your well-being and how you function as a person. The Black Stars um, spent their time at the, the Joga Palace, which is uh, until they had to move on um, for the final group phase game. Now, if you look at the Joga Palace, the word is that the national team did not want the Joga Palace as a sleeping place initially. They wrote to Cameroon, or uh, they wrote to CAF, sorry, about changing their sleeping place. CAF um, delayed, did not get back to them with a proper response, and they eventually settled into the Yoga Palace to, 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 to compete in the competition. I've heard a lot of unpalatable things, uh, things that I did not witness firsthand. But what I can tell you is that for a team hotel, for a team that is looking to do well, I think that the, the first thing that caught my attention was how chaotic the environment of the, of the hotel was. Um, let's, let's get into that first of all. Do you think that we, we, we settled in the best of places as far as this team is concerned? Do you think that the management committee did the best it could have for us in terms of where this team settled and competed? Well, first of all, I would like to say that I must credit um, the players okay. and then the team generally um, because these are people coming from different jurisdictions coming from different environments. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, some are in clubs that are not used to such facilities, yeah. even though they came through from Ghana and all that. True. True. Uh, played greater part of their careers back or out of Ghana. So uh, look at the differences mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. environment, yeah. right from Qatar to the Jirga Palace. Yeah. There's a huge margin. There's a, there's a big difference between these two places. So uh, for them to adapt, and be able to mm, manage the situation yeah. till the end uh, of the group stages, I think I, I have to give them credit. Now, let me come back to the hotel itself. You and I visited the, the facility, yeah. and it's in the middle of the town. Yep. Um, a lot of noise, and if, if anyone knows the Yaoundé very well, <laughs> the people Basically, don't sleep. a city that never uh, sleeps. They, they don't sleep in Yaoundé. It's, it's more like from 12 to 12. It's basically Oxford Street <laughs> atmosphere. <laughs> That's the Osu life. Basically. And, and obviously, yeah. the players would feel it. And the environment will, will have a toll on the players. The yeah. environment would yeah. kind of have an impact because, of course, what you listen to or what you see mm -hmm. tend to influence you, uh, though intentionally or unintentionally. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, the place wasn't the best of places to camp mm -hmm. in the first mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. I don't know what really went into it. I'm, 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 I, I'm told that a lot of concerns were raised about the facility. Yeah. People, I mean, the, the, the advanced party that went there raised complaints and, oh, look, we don't want this place. And a lot of bureaucratic, you know, processes, processes ended up, you know, uh, making us settle over there. And you look at... <laughs> how people troop in yeah. and troop out. It was different from the environment I saw when I visited the Hilton Hotel. Exactly. Somewhere just around that area where Egypt were based. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Completely different environment. Look like you can't just get closer to the Hilton Hotel in Yaoundé. Yeah. So I was like, oh, Ghana. So this is, this is it? Yes. This is what yeah. it is? That, that's the difference. And yeah. I also had a chance to visit the... No, just, just elaborate a little bit for me. I mean... You, you visited the Joga Palace, you visited the Hilton. Just, Hilton, yeah. just so, contrast and compare so, for so, me. So, so in comparing, uh, the Joga Palace looked like, um, I don't want to mention them here in Ghana, but it's more like you comparing places like Kempinski and then 
um, lower tier hotel. A lower tier hotel. Okay. So the Hilton is more classic, yeah. like a five star hotel. Yep, yep, and the yep. Jagger Palace, though people might classify it as a five star hotel, but it wouldn't match the quality yeah. of the Hilton even the, hotel. Even the environment degree. To, to, to I, I, I think the Jagger Palace, just on my eye test alone, mm. is probably like a three star hotel. Yeah, like a three star hotel. Yeah. Hilton, Hilton is top, top Hilton notch. Hilton was top notch. Top notch. The security and everything mm. was class. You mean you couldn't just walk in? No. Like a visitor just walking no. in? No. Mm. And I also had a chance to visit where the Gabon team were based. Yeah, that was, uh, that was closer to the Jaga Palace as well, okay. like 10 minutes away and from rem it. Remember that it's, it's essential that you mentioned Gabon because they also, just like Ghana, had concerns with their hotel. Mm. They wrote to CAF the first time, asking CAF to change the hotel. It wasn't changed. And then against the will of CAF, they uprooted themselves and left because... Mm. They told the, the tournament organizers basically that, you know what, we just can't stay in this yeah. place. And I, I'm hearing that those were, again, pressures put on by guys like Pierre Obama, uh, uh, America Aubameyang and Mario Lemina, two of the guys who have essentially fallen out of the Gabonese squad since then. But that just gives you a sense. Gabon were prepared to pay a fine because CAF initially fined, fined them for them, yeah. moving without their permission. But they didn't care. Well, I think, Ghana, we took the... The safe approach. Mm. We didn't want to put too much into that. If Calf won't move us, we'll just stay. Exactly. We didn't want to, you know, uh, channel our energy into that because obviously um, it was also a very cool place that yeah. players could manage yeah. uh, in terms of maybe accommodation and all that. Uh, apart from that, uh, when you're considering all the factors that plays into a competition or yeah. when players are camping, um, I think these things are very vital and important. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at where Egypt were based, Hilton mm -hmm. Hotel, yeah. and the Jagger Palace, yeah. in the township of Yaoundé, yeah. you could tell clearly that, uh, I was asking, are they better than us? But then again, I came back to the economies of these two countries. I'm sure yeah. maybe the Egyptians were ready to pay more. Yeah, for, to, for the accommodation. Exactly, for, for, for that. Because, look, it's that, quite expensive at Hilton Hotel. And, and the Hilton is also where CAF housed its topmost mm. officials. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I saw quite a number of them yeah. over there with their cars parked all over. Mm -hmm. So you look at these two situations and say, it's about the money. Uh, maybe we didn't want to spend more on that after having a very good campaign in Qatar. So maybe we thought we could actually manage the Jaga Palace, mm. uh, knowing we're going to stay there for our two games against yeah. Morocco and then Gabon, and then next we jet off to Garua. So yeah. maybe that might have gone into the thinking from the officials, yeah. why they didn't push more. But yeah. I think that the difference was quite huge. It was, like, really, really clear for everyone to see. <laughs> Hilton Hotel, the Jagger <laughs> Palace. Uh, I, I'm sure anyone, anyone who is asked to choose between these two hotels and even, will and even we, we choice um, by choosing Hilton. The Le Rebuilda, I think it was called, the Garua Hotel mm -hmm. where the Black Stars um, housed when, when they got to Garua. Remember, the Nigeria Super Eagles were already there, and then they joined them. I mean, I didn't, we, we didn't get the chance to basically um, scout that hotel properly, but even from the environment outside, you could tell it was a more secure, more serene, more appropriate place for a team to be than the Joga Palace. But let's move on from um, housing our team, but let's talk about the management committee generally in terms of the jobs they were supposed to execute. How, how would you rate their performance based on this competition? Ben... To be honest, um, this has been a very disappointing campaign. So if you are to score anyone, I don't think anyone is taking close to even 5 or 10. Mm. Yes, I'll give them 3 over 10. Because yeah. You are supervising our campaign. Yep. And if things don't go well, yep. you have to take responsibility. Uh, no matter what, you might have genuine excuses. You mm -hmm. might have mm -hmm. genuine concerns to mm -hmm. raise. But once things don't go well, you have to take responsibility. And, you know, man up and say to yourself, things didn't go right. True. That's why we True. ended up this way. So with the management committee, I think that they didn't, you know, uh, do certain things right. Mm. <laughs> yes, they didn't do certain things right. And they didn't really stamp their authority or the kind of influence they possess in certain situations. Do you, do you care to elaborate just a little further? Um, I think it's, it answers itself. <laughs> in, in terms of actually stamping your authority, yep. 
making people know you are in charge, mm. making people believe in you that this situation, you know, will be solved if it's brought forward to us. Yeah. Making people understand that this is our job and this is how we want to do it. No one else influences it. No one else comes to actually, you know, throw dust into our eyes. <laughs> you understand? I, I'm, I'm trying to be a bit diplomatic in yeah. this situation. And I think it's a safer option, though. But overall, I feel there are certain elements in this mm -hmm. management team yeah. that have to look at themselves again. The, the look letter, at themselves yeah. again in the sense mm -hmm. that looking at their pedigree, yeah. looking at what they've achieved in terms of the game, mm -hmm. their experience, they shouldn't be supervising certain incidents or certain... Um, how do I call it? Events. Okay. And as far as our black stars is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, we've come way to. You know, we've come. We've come a long way. Yeah. To put ourselves in this situation. I don't know if you are getting. No, me. I, I don't know if you are also I getting. I definitely get what you mean. Yeah. So, I look at. I, I mean, the, 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 the hotel situation is a yeah. classic example. Absolutely. It's definitely a classic example. If you are managing a team, security, um, welfare. Uh, Health-wise, mm. everything needs to be um, on point. I, and, I, I, don't, and, I don't think they can say that everything was on point. And then let me chip in this. You are managing the Black Stars. Yeah. You, you manage every single thing in the Black Stars. The players, mm -hmm. their food, yeah. their kits, their money, what else? Their water, everything. Yeah, everything. Basically Absolutely everything. everything. Yeah. So it's your duty to make sure everything is right. Even the psyche of the players. No, true. Very key. True. If a player is not happy, if a player is not in the mood. There needs to be a team psychologist exactly, on hand. It's your duty to make sure that the player becomes happy. Yeah. I'm not saying uh, there were no efforts, but to some extent, I feel more could have been done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Because you're managing the team. Well, That's why you're the management committee of the Blacks. Yes. Yeah. You said that a lot of them will have to look at themselves again. I don't think a lot of them will get the chance to look at themselves again <laughs> because if you've been following what's happening, the ministry have issued a statement um, expressing their displeasure with the technical team and also the management committee. So I'm hearing reports that there's a good chance that um, if Rahevac is... Uh, a goner as we, we are expecting, the management committee will also follow suit and that a new committee will be constituted in its place. None of this is confirmed, but we are getting the inkling that um, that is the decision that Ghana is heading towards to, moving beyond Rahevat and moving beyond this particular technical team.